our 11th Cannabis Convention at the University of Victoria. Thank you. It's always exciting to put these events together and to meet the people that are both involved with and, and interested in this subject beyond having a, a, a toke or, or eating some hemp seed. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, today we'll have many things come from it. As, as I've said earlier, uh, if even one person comes from this day and is inspired to spend you know, five or 10% of, of their spare time doing something to inform the public about cannabis or get more hemp products out there or you know, whatever um, people come up with, and there's so many things that you can do with cannabis uh, in this day and age. It's, uh, we spend a lot of time just, just thinking about that. Um, there's uh, such great potential in this plant um, that at times I get really frustrated with the, the slowness of the world. And many other people I, I know in this room do as well. But I think we can use uh, today as another sign of the types of change that we would like to see. And while change for some of us isn't happening as fast as we would like. Um, the changes that many of us want to see happen, both in the way that goods are produced and the way services are provided and the way we treat our planet and each other, the changes we're seeking are so massive and so even threatening to the way the world has existed to this point that it won't change overnight. We won't see the, the, the huge fundamental changes uh, in the way we behave uh, in one big client chief or a giant leap, although you know, we've still got December 2012 to look forward to. But barring some huge incident that would, like some spontaneous mushroom trip, wake us all up, the changes that we're hoping for in society start with the smallest things. They start with getting up and deciding that, you know, today, I'm not going to go and do some of these other things, blow some time here and there. Sure, it's important to take time for the little things in life, but it's also important to do things with your life that give it some meaning. And I could not, in my opinion, have found more meaning in my life than to be doing what I'm doing each and every day. And this convention, in many ways, is, is the highlight of my year. But uh, in many ways, I'm doing so much through the rest, it's, 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 it's becoming less so. But we have so many things going on in my work um, and in the movement that, that it's, it's really hard to keep up. And so you folks today decided to come here to learn, to meet some new people, and, and engage in the world in a way that will come out, not only with you having a positive experience, but with you knowing more than you did before that will give you some tools and ideas that will help make this world a better place, that will help make those changes that we're all hoping to see by the time we will pass all the individually. And so I would just like to, to really thank everybody for coming here and uh, in particular those that helped out in, in one way or another to make this possible. So today's first speaker is coming up uh, to talk about what is, for myself, really the, the key in, in what brought me into activism. Because honestly, if it was just smoking pot uh, and even medical marijuana, I might not have gotten involved if it were not for the, the hemp plant, per se, even though it's a cousin, I shouldn't talk about separately. But <coughs> the reason we're here today isn't because pot smoking brings alcohol so much the reason we're here today is because a military industrial complex has controlled our economies to the point where they can eliminate, essentially, for almost, they certainly did for decades, but they took away or have tried to the most important and valuable plant that has ever been strung. And the fact that we can make our plastics, our foods, our building materials, obviously our clothes, uh, from this plant is really what got me involved. And finding out 
that the banking community, this industrial complex, uh, took this plant away from, from the world was what personally got me involved because I'm a seventh generation farmer on both sides. And I really felt like the banking community, essentially, for their profits, <coughs> took this plant away from my family, from the, the greater world. And I'm a 13-year vegetarian. I'm a very healthy and strong 40-year-old man. And I'm going to prove to this world that you can be in your 60s smoking massive amounts of cannabis <laughs> and still be a very healthy, very productive individual. So that's my own little personal research project. My friend Bill Finley from Hector Company has been very instrumental in bringing some of the products, not only nutritionally, but more importantly, the, the clothing materials and, and other products, uh, to the, the people in Victoria. And he's even pushed it so far as to have one of the nicest stores on Government Street for Hempen Company, a company that he and his son started in the Kootenays that has had a very great impact here in Victoria. Uh, just last year, Bill won an award for his exceptional work with his employees. I uh, forget. Who, what, what, what was the award again, Bill? I know I'm humbling you, but what is it? Come on down here. You can't remember. Here he is. years. The oldest piece of fabric ever found by an archaeologist is a 